And just to show you how time has uh, really improved the process, this is my version of it in 2005, taken with uh, a 40 minutes uh, to an 8 inch uh, Celestron reflector and a DSLR. So technology has really changed mm. from a single 51 minute exposure to 10 four minute exposures that were combined. This was uh, M51. This was taken from New Mexico. We actually have uh, May 28th we started and we finished up on the 30th. So that was over three nights. As a matter of fact, the, the last night that we finished, we got the last green frame and I believe one hour later, that's where they discovered that supernova. <laughs> <laughs> So we say, oh, we just, but that's, that's, that's the luck of the draw. So you have all this data here, and you need an uh, uh, imaging software to process it. Because uh, you have to uh, calibrate the individual frames because they're full of noise, which you can see soon. You want to line them, stack them, apply noise reduction, sharpening, resizing, etc. Does a lot of work. It's a far cry from that click. What this, this chart here shows is um, how we can look at the noise. We go back. The one peak is this core, and the other peak is that core. And we also have some pretty bright stars in here, too. So that, that could be these other peaks here. But it's not, as you'll see. And this is uh, other stars in the background. And the lower we get here, we're getting into more noise. This space underneath is noise. And you don't want it in the image, because again, the noise contributes to the background as false data. And here it looks like we have a lot of stars. Okay. So how do you get rid, uh, uh, rid of it? Well, we use what's called the dark frame. The, the one thing on a camera that uh, you're dealing with is there's two types of noise. You're dealing with uh, thermal noise, which is very predictable. For every frame, it's always going to be pretty much the same. And then you have random noise, which is non-predictable. And the random noise is based on a couple of factors. One being is, is the quality of the CCD circuits that convert the photons to ADUs. It may actually throw in noise in that process. So again, here we have about a little over 3,000 ADUs from zero to 3,000. So here's, here's your noise floor right here. So how do you get rid of it? You use a dark frame. A dark frame is nothing more than uh, another exposure, but the, the front of the scope is covered. Some people used to use hats in the old days. Now they have electronic shutters that will go in front of the CCD and block off the light. Again, the, uh, because this is very predictable, you can subtract this from the light frame. The only thing you can't get rid of is random noise because by nature it's random, but the levels are very low. The typical readout noise on, an, on a good CCD today is anywhere from 15 electrons under. You're averaging now about uh, seven electrons. 
And here's the uh, noise profile of the dog frame. And it looks very similar to that picture, right? But again, this is supposed to be all black. But look we have here. We have peaks. These look like stars. <coughs> and here's, here's your noise floor right here. It's sitting right around the 3,080 U mark. So now you know what the noise level is. You can, and here's the same picture. It looks a lot clearer, right? You don't have that little salt and pepper mm -hmm. granular structure to it. <coughs> the only thing that still remains in there is the random noise, but again, it's very low. And here's the profile again. All right, it looks the same, right? But did you notice though? Look at the ADU count now. Now we're down to 100 and oh, we went from 31, 3400 to 145. So all that noise is gone. The only small stuff you'll have in the air is, is random noise shots. And also there was another peak over here. I don't know if you noticed it in the other slides, but that's gone too. So all that false data that you thought was stars. Here's the before and after shots. And this is with one frame. <clears throat> when you do astrophotography, what you want to do with, with uh, dark frames, you want to take uh, anywhere from 12 to 20, because uh, mathematically, when you, when you average them out together, you get a, a more accurate representation of the thermal noise. But I just did it with one frame here. So quite a, quite a difference. Again, it looked like a lot of stars here. It's just noise. Uh, the other thing you may hear is flat frames. Uh, flat frames is nothing new. They use this in daytime photography too. The purpose of a flat frame is you want to record uh, like light fall off characteristics. You see here on the edges, it's slightly, uh, they got more shadows here. And these little donuts, things that look like you know, loose leaf binders. This is actually caused by dust. And there's a formula where if you, if you measure the width of the donut, you can actually calculate how far from the CCD surface that dust is. Again, this, this would be uh, used during the calibration process. If you have very clean optics, uh, you can bypass it. All right, stacking. As I mentioned earlier, this was for one frame. What stacking is, is uh, you are going to take multiple <coughs> frames over, either uh, through, through one night or the course of many nights. And it all depends on how dim the object is. If it's a very bright object, like a M51, we, I think this was over three nights we got everything. Uh, but the advantage of stacking, like in this case here, this is the green channel. This is a single 10 minute frame. And here we took nine frames and we stacked them. Uh, what stacking is, is uh, you align it so all the, all the pixels fall at the same uh, uh, location and then we average it. And the advantage of that is, I don't know if you can see it up there, but you see over here it's kind of grainy. Uh, actually look over here, in this, this, this part here, it's very grainy. And even in the arm structure it's grainy. But when you take a lot of data and stack it and average it, you see how clear it gets, especially over here. Plus it also starts to develop some of the outer structure too of the galaxy. This is where the time comes in. Uh, like I said, depending on how dim the object is, it could be anywhere from one night to many nights. Now you've got to take out some of the artifacts that are left in there that the other procedures didn't take. Uh, one of the things is uh, atmospheric interference with the image. Uh, you have moisture in the air, heat and everything. Uh, you know, the stars sometimes at night just seem twinkle, which is, may look pretty, but that's the worst thing for astrophotography. But what's happening is uh, the stars are not as, as, as tight as they could be, and you may also suffer in, in detail, right? Because you have a slight blur to it. The red channel here. Uh, all deconvolution means is just it's the reverse of, of the convoluting an image. And here we apply some sharpening. I think it was about 25 passes. And can you see back there the difference in, yeah. in detail? Yeah. So like look at the arm structure here, especially like around the core. You can, you can, you can see some um, 
It's just much more detail. Also, the uh, the stars become a little more sharper. Okay. And there's there's a limit to uh, how much you can deconvolute. If you go too much, you'll get ringing around the stars, which is which is uh, it'll, it'll appear as little black spots. Uh, sometimes, if I see a star ringing, I'll continue to deconvolute to get the majority of the image done, and then go back and manually fix the star. <clears throat> so, in the case of a mono, we have to take a, a series of exposures to red, green, and blue filters, and we're working in three separate channels. And even though it's a mono uh, CCD, you st uh, wait, let me take that back. It's a mono chip, you're, you're imaging through red, green, and blue filters, the image still comes out mono. Uh, I, I will usually process each channel separately to deal with the noise. And you see in this blue channel here, you see the, the noise in that? That's actually some artifacts left over from the camera. We had since sent the camera out to get that repaired. And then uh, once I'm happy with that, I'll actually assign each channel the color that belongs to it with the filter, and then combine the red, green, and blue to give the composite RGB image. Take a bow. Mm. This is what I love about astrophotography. You are actually recording history. Things that maybe took place from minutes ago to millions of years ago. And to think that those photons have been traveling through space for all that time. And actually, here's that, here's that supernova right there. Right there. One more hour. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you.